today's lecture we will see about the characterization techniques like uh, uh, atomic force microscopy in the previous lectures we have seen the characterization techniques like x-ray diffraction technique xrd and we have seen what is transmission electron microscopy and we have seen what is scanning electron microscopy right in today's lecture we will see what is uh, atomic force microscopy atomic force microscopy is also one of the characterization technique to absorb the surface morphology absorb the surface morphology unlike the scanning electron microscopy and transmission electron microscopy right so here uh, the fab the material which have been fabricated the nano material that have been fabricated uh, have been characterized and, and need to be characterized need to be characterized using one of the characterization technique like uh, atomic force microscopy right so so let us see what is atomic force microscopy afm that is what generally people will call it as afm that is atomic force microscopy so the atomic force microscopy is an instrument that can analyze and characterize samples at the microscopic level right so that um, atomic force microscopy is an instrument that can analyze and characterize samples so samples can be characterized and analyzed can samples can be characterized and analyzed uh, analyzed at the very microscopic level microscopic level that means we look at surface characteristics that means we look at the surface characteristics with very with very accurate uh, resolution with accurate resolution around 1 micrometer accurate resolution around the 1 micrometer so that's how the atomic force microscope is an instrument that we can analyze that we can analyze and characterize samples at what level at microscopic level that means we can look at surface we can that means this means we can look at surface characteristics with very accurate resolution which is less than 1 micrometer which is less than 1 micrometer so this is what the instrument this is what the instrument that is atomic force microscopy and uh, we have this instrument right this is, these are some of the instruments what we can see here right so that's why we are telling the atomic force microscopy is one of the characterization techniques one of the characterization technique to characterize the one of the characterization technique to characterize the samples to characterize the samples at atomic scale at, at the atomic scale at the atomic scale or at the microscopic level so that means we look at the surface characteristics that means surface morphology if you see here so this is what we can see the surface morphology surface characteristic property so this is your, your surface characteristic property right and this is your surface characteristic property and uh, surface characteristic property and also this can be analyzed this can be analyzed to a to a resolution of uh, up to 1 micrometer to a resolution of around 1 micrometer right so that is what the atomic force microscopy is okay so uh, this is what the uh, different look sample uh, diffraction sensor this is this is a sample of, uh, sample diffraction sensor this is what it looks like right so the atomic force microscopy is being used of technologies affecting the electrons the atomic force microscopy is being used of technologies affecting electronics telecommunications biological chemical and energy industries atomic force microscopy is being used for technologies affecting electronics telecommunications biological chemical and energy industries also, the FM is, F AFM is being applied to studies of phenomena such as abrasion, adhesion, and cleaning, and cleaning, corrosion, corrosion, etching, friction, and polishing. Right? So these are the, some of the uh, uh, applications, applications which we apply to study uh, the phenomena such as abrasions, abrasions, adhesions, cleaning, erosion etching phenol friction and polishing so these are some of the uh, applied to the study these, these are some of the some of the properties so some of the phenomena right that's what atomic force so atomic force microscope is being used of technology affecting electronics telecommunication biological chemical and energy industries also the afm is being applied to industries to apply to studies of phenomena such as abrasion addition cleaning corrosion etching friction and polishing so, if you come to the history of atomic force microscopy, if you come to the history of atomic force microscopy, in the fall of 1985, in the fall of 1985, the first atomic force microscopy was made by Gerd Binning, was made by Gerd Binning and Christoph and Christoph Gerber and Christoph Gerber, who used the cantilever to examine the insulating, who, who used the cantilever to examine insulating surfaces. Okay. In the fall of 1985, the first AFM was made by Gerd Binning. And Christoph Gerber, who used the cantilever to examine insulating surfaces, a small hook at the end of the cantilever was pressed. Uh, was pressed a small hook at the end of the cantilever was pressed against the surface, against the surface. While the sample was scanned, and the sample was scanned beneath the tip, the force between the tip and sample was measured by tracking the deflection of the cantilever. 
the force between tip and sample was measured by tracking the deflection of the cantilever. So, in the fall of 1985, the first atomic force microscopy was used by Gerd Binning and Christoph Gerber, who used the cantilever to examine the insulating surfaces. A small hook at the end of the cantilever was pressed against the surface, against the surface while the sample was scanned beneath the tip. The force between the sample was scanned. The force between the sample was scanned beneath the tip. The force between the tip and sample was measured by tracking the deflection of the cantilever. Right. So, if you come to the components of a AFM, we have different components. You see, this is our system. This is this is our system, right? This is our system. Okay. We have the XY transmission screws. We have the X, XY trans, uh, translation screws. We have the these are the XY translation screws, which are dom dominated like this, right? And we have laser beam, uh, laser beam uh, string screw, laser beam string screws, and we have laser on or off, laser on all of the light to be incident, light to be incident, right? And we have probe heads, probe head, the probe head is something like this, is something like this. Something like this, right? So these are the probe head and we have laser, we have the laser intensity and position indicators and position sensitive photo detectors and PSPD adjustment screws, XY translation stage, XY translation stage and cartridge position screws. So these are the some of the components of atomic force microscopy. So we have probe heads, we have laser on off switch, laser beam strain, uh, strain screws, XY translation screws, and we have laser intensity and position uh, indicators, position sensitive photo detectors are used, and we have PSPD adjustment screws, XY translation stage, and cartridge position screws. So these are the various components of atomic force microscopy which is used to analyze and characterize the uh, samples, uh, characterize the samples in a very nano range. Of, uh, of a nano range around one micrometer range, right? So these are some of the components. The components, uh, some of the components which were uh, can be further continued, like piezoelectric crystal and probes, right? Piezoelectric crystal. We have a piezoelectric crystal there. Piezoelectric crystals are ceramic crystals. Piezoelectric crystals are ceramic crystals that expand or contract. That expand or contract in the presence of voltage. Piezoelectric crystals are, are ceramic crystals that expand or contract in the presence of voltage gradient, that in the presence of voltage gradient, and conversely, they develop an electrical potential in response to mechanical pressure. In this way, movements in x, y, and z directions are possible. So, piezoelectric crystals are ceramic crystal material that expand or contract in the presence of voltage gradient, and conversely, they develop an electrical potential in response to mechanical pressure. In this way, movements in x, y, and z directions are possible. Probe. The probe represents a micro machined cantilever. The probe represents a micro machined cantilever with a sharp tip at one end, which is brought into interaction, which is brought into interaction with the sample surface. Right? They are characterized by their force constant and resonant frequency. Resonant frequency. That means uh, piezoelectric crystals and probes play an important uh, play an important role for the components of atomic force microscopy. So piezoelectric crystals are generally the ceramic materials that expand or contract in the presence of voltage gradient. And conversely, they develop an electrical potential in response to mechanical pressure. In this way, the movements uh, in this way movements in x y directions are possible. That what we are seeing here in these x y translation screws. Is it in the x y translation screws we can see, and we also we have x y translation stages, right? Right. And we have probe, probe, right? A probe is nothing but a sample like this, right? A probe, as you see, so your probe is will be there. This is what the probe is cantilever like. Right. So the probe represents a micro machine cantilever, cantilever with a, a sharp a tip at one end, sharp tip at one end, which is brought into interaction with sample surface. They are characterized by force constant and resonant frequency. So if you come to the deflection, deflection uh, components of AFM. So we have the beam deflection component. We have the beam deflection, uh, beam deflection detection. Right. To detect the displacement of the cantilever, to detect the displacement of the cantilever. A laser is reflected off the back of the cantilever and collected in a photodiode. When the laser is displaced, when the laser is displaced horizontally along the positions top B to A and bottom D to C, there exists a bending due to topography. There exists a bending due to topography. While if this movement is vertically left, B to D and right A to C, it produces a torsion due to the friction that is what due to lateral forces. So, to detect the displacement of the cantilever, a laser, a laser is uh, reflected off the, off the back of the cantilever and is collected in a photodiode. 
when the laser is displaced horizontally along the position stop BA and bottom DC, there exists a bending due to topography. While if this movement is vertical, vertically left B to D and right A to C, it produces a torsion due to the uh, friction, which is called the lateral force. So these are these are this is nothing but the some of the components here we can see here. This is one component, mm, and where we have the uh, displacing positions from B to A, from B to A, and B to A, and bottom D to C, and bottom D to C, and vertically left B to D. So that means we have in this case, in the both cases, and we have in this case, right? So this is what we understand uh, in the one of the some of the components of atomic force microscopy, right? So this is how the tip get uh, generated. This is how the tip get uh, tip get accelerated, right? So this is what the laser beam. Laser beam is imported on the tip, and we position our detector to see that uh, lever that is a sharp edge, right? So this particular uh, this particular tip frequently hits the sample and try to study the surface uh, or surface morphology or surface thickness, surface softness also. So this is what one of the meta. Uh, this is what one of the uh, component. Uh, one of the component. What we can see in uh, in the picture in form. That is what we are using. Uh, MISA XY scanner, and uh, we have some different uh, photodiodes, uh, photodiodes lasers and detectors, right? So these are some of the uh, form where we can uh, observe. This is one of the some of the block diagram, right? So how it, how to work on with the AFM? So a sharp tip is scanned over a surface with feedback mechanisms. Uh, a sharp tip. Is scanned over a surface with a feedback mechanism that enable the piezoelectric scanners to maintain the tip at a constant force or height. Maintain the tip at a constant force or height. So tips are typically made from uh, Si3N4 or silicon material. Silicon material. AFM has an optical detection system. AFM has an optical detection system in which the tip is attached. Tip is attached to the underside of the reflective cantilever. A uh, cantilever. Mm, a diode laser is focused into the back of a, a reflective cantilever. The photo detector measures the difference between the upper and lower photo detector and then converts to voltage. A sharp tip is scanned over a surface with feedback mechanisms that enable the piezoelectric scanners to maintain the tip of constant force or height. Tips are typically made from silicon, uh, silicon and the AFM has an optical detection system in which the tip is attached to the underside of a reflective cantilever. A diode laser is focused onto the back into the back of a reflective cantilever and the photo detectors are you measures the difference between the uh, upper and uh, lower photo detectors and then converts into voltage right so this is how the uh, afm uh, the cantilever of the afm work so if you see working modes there are different modes uh, there are different modes of uh, atomic force microscopy one is a contact mode and another is a non contact mode right so in contact mode, in this mode, the tips make soft physical contact. In the tips make soft, tips make soft physical contact with the surface of the sample. Just that uh, soft uh, physical is uh, with the surface of the sample in the sense it makes very soft, right? The tip is very soft. The tip is very soft okay. because if when it is soft only, the simple the sample cannot be destroyed. The sample cannot be uh, the sample cannot be what is you tell like. Uh, sample cannot be destroyed, right? Sam sample will be neat, right? The sample will be there. That means uh, uh, there will be no. If the sample is not, uh, uh, if you go for hard, uh, if you go for hard to touch over the, if you, if you go for the hard to touch of that particular sample over the surface, then uh, the sample may get spoiled. The sample may get spoiled. That's why people will tell that make soft physical contact with the surface of the sample. In contact force mode, the deflection of the cantilever is fixed and the motion of the scanner in that direction is recorded. By using the contact mode, uh, AFM, even atomic resolution images are obtained. Even atomic images resolutions are obtained. So in this contact mode, in this mode, the tips make soft to physically contact with the surface of the sample. In the contact force mode, the deflection of the cantilever is fixed and the motion of the and the motion of the scanner in that direction is recorded. By using contact mode, atomic force microscopy, even atomic resolution images are obtained. Right. So this is uh, this is one of the uh, this is one of the working mode of atomic force microscopy. If you come to the working modes of atomic force microscopy, well, we have certain advantages of this contact mode. So we have certain advantages as well as some disadvantages. So and if you come to the advantages, we have eye scan speeds, eye scan speeds. The atomic resolution is possible. 
easier scanning of rough samples with extreme changes in vertical topography high scan speeds high scan speeds atomic resolution is possible easier scanning of rough samples with uh, extreme changes in vertical photography vertical topography if you come to the disadvantages lateral forces can distort the image lateral forces can distort the image capillary forces form a fluid layer capillary forces form a fluid layer can cause large forces normal to the tip sample preparation tip sample interaction combination of these forces reduce spatial resolution and cause damage to soft samples so lateral forces can distort the image capillary forces form a fluid layer can cause larger forces normal to the tip sample interaction combination of these forces reduces spatial resolution and cause damage to soft sample right so these are the some of the disadvantages and advantages of working modes of atomic force microscopy and if you go for the non contact mode in, the, in this mode in this mode the probe operates in the attractive force region in this mode the probe operates in the attractive force region and the tip sample interaction is minimized and the tip sample interaction is minimized that mean here in uh, in characterizing the afm the tip plays an important role in uh, touching that particular sample so if it touches hard the sample will get spoiled right the sample will get spoiled if it is a thin filling the thin filling may be a vanish that the, the filling coating may the filling coating may be a vanish that means the coating layer can be spoiled right we cannot find it so that's why in contact in non contact mode it is likely the interaction is uh, the interaction between the uh, interaction between the tip and the uh, what do you say thin and the and uh, sample is minimized that is what the interaction is minimized the use of non contact mode allowed uh, non contact mode allowed scanning without influence in the shape of the sample by the tip sample forces in most cases in most cases the cantilever of choice for this mode is a uh, one having high spring constant around 2200 nanometers and 100 2200 and newton per meter newton per meter so that it does not stick to the sample surface at small amplitudes right so that's what in contact mode in non contact mode Uh, in contact mode, uh, the basic differences that we can bring out between the contact mode and non-contact mode is: in non-contact mode, the uh, interaction between the sample and the uh, sample and the tip is minimized. So the use of non-contact mode allows scanning without influencing the shape of the sample by the tip sample forces. In most cases, the cantilever of choice for this mode is a one having spring constant of twenty to hundred. Newton per meter, so that it does not stick to the sample surface at small amplitudes. So this is what we observe in non-contact mode. So if you see the advantages of non-contact mode and disadvantages of non-contact mode, in a case of advantage, low force is exerted. Low force is exerted in the sample surface, and no damage is caused to soft sample. Low force is exerted on the sample surface. Low force is exerted on the sample surface, and no damage is uh, no damage is caused to soft samples. If you go for the disadvantages, low lateral resolution, low lateral resolution, uh, low lateral resolution. The resolution is very low, limited uh, by tip sample interaction. That's uh, limited by sim uh, limited by uh, tip sample uh, separations, right? Uh, right and the slower scan speed to avoid the contact with fluid layer slower scan speed to avoid contact with fluid layer usually only usually only applicable in extremely hydrophobic samples with a minimal full fluid layer with a minimal fluid layer so these are the some of the uh, disadvantages the disadvantages what we obtain when we study about the working modes of atomic force microscopy so in in the atomic force microscopy mode uh, in working modes of atomic force microscopy we have as we told we have some contact modes and non contact modes so it has both uh, contact modes has both advantage and disadvantage and uh, in atomic force microscopy in non contact mode also we have certain advantages and disadvantages when we come to the advantage low force is exerted in the sample surface and no damage is caused and no damage is caused to the soft sample if we come to the disadvantage lower lateral resolution Uh, limited by uh, limited by tip sample separation slower slower scan um, speed to avoid contact with fluid layer usually only applicable in extremely hydrophobic samples with a minimal fluid layer right so this is what the working modes of afm right 
So if you see the working modes of AFM, long contact AFM that is NCAFM is one of the several vibrating cantilever techniques in which AFM cantilever is vibrated near the surface of the sample. That means vibrated in the sense there are certain small vibrations we observe, vibrations we observe. If we do it physically, we can understand. If we do physically, we can understand uh, when we characterize the sample particularly, right? So this is what non-contact uh, AFM, that is what we are telling, is why the spacing between the tip and the sample for the non-contact AFM is of the order of tens of hundreds of angstroms. So spacing is indicated on the Van der Waals curve of the curve, Van der Waals curve of the figure. So if you see the figure here, we have the non-contact AFM image. This is what the non-contact AFM image. And this is what, uh, if you see the variation with the interatomic distance and the force, this is what we observe, just like we, we observe in the Coulomb's potential, right? Coulomb's potential. That's what we are telling. Non-contact AFM is one of the several vibrating cantilever techniques in which an AFM cantilever is vibrated near the surface of the sample. The spacing between the tip and the sample of our uh, non-contact AFM is of the order of tens to uh, hundreds of angstroms. The spacing is indicated on the Van der Waals curve of the figure. So this is what we have some contact mode and we have here non-contact mode. This is what in the contact mode. So we have different layers here. We have intermediate contact, contact and non-contact. And here the distance to temporal separation, that is what interatomic distance we find. When we see the Coulomb's repulsive forces, repulsive forces, Coulomb's repulsive forces when we see. So the variation that we can observe between the force and the interatomic distance is what we see like this, right? Which is a function of VFR. Right, Coulomb's potential force VFR is equal to uh, we write e power i k x or something like that. Okay, so this is what the working modes of uh, non-contact R A F M for uh, non-contact uh, atomic force microscopy mode. So it, if you want, if you see because of the force between the tip and the sample in the non-contact region is low, it is more difficult to measure than the force in the contact region. Don't measure the contact region, which can be several orders of magnitude greater. In addition, cantilevers used for atomic uh, non-contact uh, non AFM must be stiffer than those stiffer than those used for contact AFM because soft cantilevers can be pulled into contact with the sample surfaces. The sample, the small forces values, the small force values in the non-contact region and the greater stiffness of the cantilever used for used for a non-contact AFM force uh, atomic force microscopy are both factors that make the non-contact AFM signal small and therefore difficult to measure. Thus, a sensitive alternating current and sensitive AC detection scheme is used uh, used for non-contact uh, non AFM um, operation. Right? So, in, in non-contact mode, the system vibrates uh, vibrates a stiff cantilever near its resonant frequency, typically 100 to 400 kilohertz, with an amplitude of few tens of angstrom. Then it depicts changes in the resonant frequency of vibration amplitude as the tip comes near the sample surface. The sensitivity of this detection, uh, detection uh, scheme provides some angstrom vertical resolution in the image as with the contact if, uh, atomic force microscopy. So because the force between, uh, between the tip and the sample in the non-contact region is low, it is more difficult to measure than the force in the contact region. Right? So, which can be uh, several orders of magnitude, uh, which of magnitude of greater range, right? Greater magnitude. So, in addition, cantilevers used for non-contact uh, atomic force microscopy must be stiffer than those used for contact air, uh, atomic force microscopy because soft cantilevers can be pulled out into contact with the sample surface. The, sounds, the small force values in the non-contact regime and the greater stiffness of the cantilevers used for the non-contact uh, atomic force microscopy are both factors that may the non-contact uh, atomic force microscope is signal small and therefore difficult to measure. Thus, a sensitive AC detection scheme is used for NCAFM operation. In non-contact mode, the system vibrates a stiff cantilever near its resonant frequency typically from 100 to 400 kilohertz with an amplitude of a few tens angstrom. Then it detects changes in the resonant frequency or vibration amplitude. As the tip comes near the sample surface, the sensitivity of the detection scheme provides sub angstrom vertical resolution in the image as with the contact atomic force microscopy. So what are the advantages and disadvantages if you see? So we have the high lateral resolution of from 1 nanometer to 5 nanometer, uh, 1 nanometer to 5 nanometer and we have lower forces and less damage to soft samples in air, uh, left, uh, less damage to soft samples in air 
almost no there almost there are no lateral forces that will be existed so that means the advantage is the advantage is we can uh, we can have the resolution from 1 nanometer to 5 nanometer and lower forces and less damage to soft samples in a almost no lateral forces so disadvantage is slow scan speed uh, scan speed than in contact mode slow scan speed than in contact mode so these are the some of the various 3d images what we can obtain when we scan when uh, when we scan the, the image in atomic force microscopy so this is what the three dimensional image this is what the three dimensional image and we can see uh, the softness you can see the surface softness here right so this is what the sample uh, when viewed you can, these are all uh, done for a sample of the thin film like so these are some of the images so, so these are the some of the references where we have taken uh, the uh, uh, this particular part right so that's what uh, when we speak about if we have certain uh, uh, we, and we have when we talk about the working modes when we talk about the working modes of atomic force because the force between the tip and the sample in the non contact region is low then it becomes uh, difficult to measure the force in the contact region which can be uh, several orders of magnitude in greater so that's what in addition cantilevers can be used for non contact air for uh, atomic force microscopy um, cantilevers can be used for non contact air for atomic force microscopes must be um, atomic force microscope must be stiffer than those used for uh, contact uh, afm de afm devices because soft cantilevers can be pulled into contact with the surface with the sample surfaces so this small force values in the non contact region and the greater stiffness of the cantilevers used for the non contact air for atomic force uh, microscopy are both factors that make ncafm ncafm in the sense non contact uh, atomic force signal small and therefore difficult and therefore becomes difficult to measure it thus a sensitive um, ac detection scheme is used for the non contact air uh, atomic force operation so in non contact mode in non contact mode that is uh, the system vibrates a stiff cantilever near its resonant frequency typically from 100 to 400 kilohertz with an amplitude of few tens of angstroms then it detects changes in the resonant frequency or vibration amplitude as a tint comes to the sample surface the sensitivity of the detection scheme provides sub angstrom vertical resolution in the image as it uh, contact afm so these are what some of the advantages what we have seen previously here okay slow scan speed uh, than the contact mode right so this is one of the basic disadvantage right so these are all some of the images what we have to obtain uh, while doing the uh, characterization right and these are the images and uh, thanks for listening like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates